Okay, turn nine. Two magic sites. We found a frozen deeps, which gives us a water gem, and we found a giant anemone, which gives us a nature gem. We also hit conjuration level three. Fantastic. Uh, we actually probably want to just keep going up enchantment, but before that, we want to get one level of thaumaturgy for communions. So with that, we can go up to conjuration level five. That will enable us to summon full size water elementals. And Thaumaturgy 1 will enable us to communion our slave mages to help us do so. Now, battle in Nuptia. We fought a battle, it was really easy. Um, I don't think we took any casualties. All we had left was these Ictiad warriors, some of which were actually injured. And Ictiads have really bad magic resistance, so the Mind Blasts just kind of destroyed them. Um, literally none of them were capable of attacking by the time we reached them. And they all just got Mind Blasted into Oblivion. I think the Shamblers didn't even get any kills. Yeah, the Shamblers didn't even get any kills. The Giboleths got the most kills. So, that was great. Uh, we got Misfortune 3 in the Great Blue. We don't really care. It was actually Misfortune minus 3, so it act only worked out to Misfortune 1. We do, however, see a Theradosian Temple. Uh, so, Therados is spending their money on building temples. That's, you know, like, understandable, but uh, annoying. However, over here, this is actually Site Searcher Mr. Magoo's Dominion, so it's not Therados like I was kind of afraid. I was a little alarmed at the idea of Therados having Dominion all the way over here already. Um, that's Site Searcher Mr. Magoo. Site Searcher Mr. Magoo is Tirna Nog, so that's fine. Like, I don't care. His scales aren't even terrible. Um, he has Growth 3, and he's not going to kill the population. This over here, however, I think is the Dominion of Therados, because Therados has a temple right there, and that might be the Dominion of Therados, or it might be someone who's on land. In any case, um, we're doing all right. There's an Anunnaki of the sky down there. We still have access to this province as well, so I think we can still get a foothold on land if we move quickly. Um, I can't really cast any summons yet. I could call Prakens if I had Water 3, um, and that might be a relatively efficient use of gems, but I don't have Water 3 yet. Um, I need to get a, a Water 3... If I get a Water 3 random Slave Mage really soon, then I'll do that. Or I could, of course, recruit a Mind Lord. But if I recruited a Mind Lord, I'm not sure I would want him to be doing that. I would want him to be doing other stuff. I recruited an Abadai, uh, Muthalan. And Muthalan is going to move around site searching for death. I'm a little bit, it's a little bit unfortunate that he randomed water. I would much rather he'd randomed death or earth. But alas, whatever. Uh, Ubasathla is site searching. Holber is actually building a lab. Uh, Negofa is moving. Uh, with these troops, he can actually leave these troops behind, I think, because someone else could use them to help in the attack there. We're going to move Ulug Beg in order to do that. And Nigofa is going to move out here, and he's going to build a temple of my own. And once I build the temple, I will recruit a couple of Polypal Mothers. Now, Polypal Mothers aren't actually going to be useful to me later in the game, and they will cost upkeep, which will be a pit. But, uh, currently, they will be Priest Level 2, and they will be able to preach rapidly. And that will enable me to bolster my Dominion, which will be important. Because I don't have many Dominion spread checks, and I suspect Therados has a lot more. He may also have much higher level Dominion. So, Mushroom Mushroom is attacking Lake of Vastness. I think with his army he can take uh, Amber Clan without too much trouble. Meanwhile, Pow Pow, of the Swimming Men, who I just recruited, is attacking over here in Endless Ocean. He'll be attacking into Turtle Tribe Tritons, and his Triton Troopers should be... Superior to Turtle Tribe Tritons. Say Turtle Tribe Triton Trooper five times fast, by the way. Uh, it's it's annoyingly difficult. Um, I think he should be able to win this. If not, uh, it'll be a pit, but it will at least enable Mushroom Mushroom to sweep in and claim the province very easily. I'm really hoping that I can get two provinces this turn, because I have not yet so far. And as a consequence, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven provinces on turn nine, which isn't a great look. I'm like, I'm going to be real. That's not a great look. I don't like it. Um... What I'd like it would be to uh, take both of these provinces and then be able to take both of these provinces uh, and move with move Mushroom Mushroom up here to take the dick of the lake. And then kind of see, that will give me a lot more vision on what's around me, and it will give me kind of a little bit more, a little bit more presence. Uh, this fort over here is three months from construction, from completion rather. Uh, this would be a grand province to have a fort in. I don't quite have the gold to build that fort. I could not recruit a mage this turn. That would give me exactly enough gold to build a fort. Hmm. The net result of building forts in these two provinces would be to take a lot of resources away from Relay, 
which does not help me spam slave guardians, but it increases my total resources. And total resources, of course, that just means I can recruit them in more places and then concentrate them. So it's not that bad, bad a deal. So yeah, we're going to do that. That will also enable me to recruit Triton Knights here. 24 resources plus the 29 from the Great Blue. Um, I'll be able to recruit at least a couple of Triton Knights per turn. Because we have high recruitment points here as well. And uh, Triton Knights are pretty solid units. Actually. Um, for underwater combat. And especially... Particularly interesting, they do have a magical attack, so they can fight ghosts. Not super efficiently, but they can fight ghosts, which is very nice. Also, their magic resistance is fairly high, so they have a decent chance to render the to, to have the damage that's taken from spectral weapons. So they're good anti-Therados units, and of course I will end up having to fight Therados at some point. Uh, so yeah, that's the turn. Uh, we've hit our, our immediate first uh, conjuration goal, which is Lesser Water Elementals. Um, I can't summon yetis, I can't summon cave cows, I can only call krakens. I would like to go up. Like I said, level 5 gives me water elementals, it also gives me sea trolls and naiad warriors. Naiad warriors is a very, very effective spell for helping me leave the water, because kedonids are very, very efficient. In terms of gems, they give you chaff with off 4 so they can block very effectively. It can be very useful. And then I'll want to go up. Uh, further, of course, I'll have to get, like, streams from Hades. That will get me a Death 3 commander, which will be fantastic, who is Amphibious. Uh, sea King's Court and Summon Bishop Fish are very important for ramping up water if I need to do that. Which I will, because my commanders can't wear robes of the sea, so they can't actually boost. Um, I can actually get up to water 5 without any of those summons, so I guess I don't really need them, though. Because the reason you want water 5 is to summon Queens of Elemental Water. The other reason you want high level water, of course, is to cast a Maelstrom. That requires water 6, so for that you need a summon, or you need somebody who can use both boosters. Well, you need a summon, basically, because you need to have, um, uh, water 6 means you need to have a water 4 chassis, and then you need to have either, you need to have both water boosters. If you want to do it with a water 3 chassis, or a water 4 chassis that can only wear one booster, um, you also have to have a Ring of Wizardry, which is hella expensive powerful astral item. Now, I'll be able to forge Rings of Wizardry, so that's a potential route in, uh, but I need more astral income also. Having more astral income would be absolutely radical. Uh, this province, I don't really need a fort there. I can build a fort there, especially if I'm building a temple. Um, I can recruit Triton Troopers there, which is fine, and it has a little bit more by way of recruitment points and resources. Uh, building a fort over here would give me Ictiads, but I'm not super impressed by Ictiads. We're just going to cancel that guy. And up here we can pump out a couple of Triton Troopers just for funsies. Just to see if we can accomplish something with them. And over here we can take that Triton and give him to Nagofa, so Nagofa can concentrate a few more units right in this area. We'll have some Triton Troopers. We'll have that uh, Amber Clan Guard. Uh, Amber Clan Guard are also very potent units for fighting underwater. I talked about them before. We're just going to set one of them on repeat here, and once we get the uh, the fort up, we'll recruit a few more to help in the war on uh, other underwater enemies. We don't want to go in too heavy for underwater-only units, because once we've taken the whole lake, they won't be useful. And there isn't a good way to kill your own units in Dominion, so they'll just sit around soaking up upkeep forever. Which we want to avoid, but... Uh, they're the best units for fighting underwater. They're better than Merfolk, they're better than Atlanteans. Um, so, I don't want to have some of them. Triton Troopers, well, actually Triton Troopers aren't super efficient. Amber Clan Guards are much, much better. Yeah, let's stick with the Amber Clan Guard for now. Okay, so, that's turn 9, and I will see you all in turn 10. We are starting to get, we are starting to proceed to begin, and it should be a very interesting next few turns. By turn 12... This rock wall will be two turns from completion. This one will finish on turn 12 and we will start upgrading it. And hopefully we'll have a third started, which will put us in a pretty good place fort-wise. So, I'll see you all in turn 10. Alright, folks, turn 10. The Throne of Beasts has been claimed already. And, uh, of course, that is going to spark animal attacks. I don't know what form those take underwater. It'll be interesting to see. In any case, didn't find any magic sites. Sadly. I got some misfortune and some unrest, also sadly, so Boat Eater now hates me, which is, eh, not the worst. Battles in Lake Vastness and Endless Ocean. In Lake Vastness, 
we fought a bunch of Amber Tribe. Amber Tribe do have 12 magic resistance, so they're less mind blastable than a lot of people, uh, which means they do get to kill some of my Shambler Thralls every time this happens. But we, uh, we soldiered on through them. Wasn't too, too terrible. And then in Endless Ocean, my uh, mercenary Triton troopers fought a bunch of Turtle Tribe Tritons and wiped them out largely because uh, they had Prot. They wear actual armor, whereas Turtle Tribe Tritons wear shitty armor, Turtle Shell Hauberks, and uh, no helmets, and because their armor meant that they had poison barbs. So, if you'll watch, the Turtle Tribe Tritons immediately started taking poison damage, which uh, hurt their HP a lot and so caused them to rout fairly quickly. So, that was good. We lost four of our Mercenary Tritons, we lost four of our Shambler Thralls, and overall everything's going fine. Now, Mercenary Tritons are dipping back here to hit the Darks. My units, I, this is another Amber Clan province. There's a ton of Amber Clan on this map. Um, I could go try to attack it, but I think I might lose if this is actually 50 units, because that in Lake Vastness was less than 30 units, and they still got four kills on my Shambler Thralls, so eh, rather not. Instead, I'm going to head up the deck. Uh, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna go right straight up the shaft here and, uh, take out these Ictia Warriors and see what these are, see if we can take those. Also, uh, Ulm has moved a huge army of, well, not huge, a fairly large for the early game army of primarily Atavi Archers, which is a little bit of an odd decision, into, uh, Ashington, which indicates they've also taken that province, because I didn't see this army before. So, uh, I am moving into 73 to see if I can establish myself on land. And in fact, I think Ulm is messaging back to me. Okay, that should be fine. Great. Fantastic. So, yes, we're going to take 73. We have uh, a bunch of Shambler Thralls and Lobo Guard moving in, led by three mages who will be spamming lesser water elementals, and I think everything will be fine. It'll be fantastic. So, that's the plan. It's quite brief. Once again, in terms of research, we are just barely going to hit Thaumaturgy 1 this turn, at which point we'll be able to Communion, but not really much else. And after that, we're going to go back to Conjuration for Conjuration 5. Uh, Mind Burn is also a pretty good early target, so that might be something we want to do in the near future, but not right now. Right now, we're just going to focus on the Water Elementals. So, that's the turn. Uh, we're doing pretty well. We're doing okay. If we can actually take three provinces this turn, like I hope we can, uh, we'll be, once again, kind of on target. We're a little bit slow right now. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine provinces. Hopefully, we can kick that up to 12 and then take another one or two in the next turn. We can't take that because that's Theradoses. These one, two, three, four, five, six provinces are all Theradoses. But, and I, I don't think we can take Emerald Lake because our Triton Troopers will just be outnumbered. So we'll probably just suicide Pow Pow's mercenaries into Emerald Lake uh, in an effort to see if we can we can accomplish something there. Um, cause some casualties to the enemy. And in, in time to bring more troops over to destroy them. Uh, I have 30 gold left, which I'm just not going to spend. Rock Walls done in two turns. Rock wall's done in four turns. We do have this sweet water current, which is pretty rad. Uh, Muthalan is searching for death sites, and he'll troll around searching for death sites. Holber is moving. We are building a temple in Lake Doom to help push out Therados' dominion. And overall, I think things are going pretty well. So, I'll see y'all in turn 11. Okay, so it's turn 11, and the first thing you might notice is that I appear to have been cockblocked. So, how did this happen? Well, we attacked Pranda. And it all went perfectly according to plan. We had our Lobo Guard spread out in a scattered line in front. We had our... Excuse me, I'm choking on myself, apparently. Uh, we have our Shambler Thralls right behind them. Over here we have uh, just some heavy infantry, some militia, nothing too impressive. Uh, and we rolled on in. Unfortunately, my mages did decide that this was enough to spend all their gems on, which I kind of anticipated they would. So we summoned a bunch of lesser water elementals, which didn't really help us much, but the Shambler Thralls busted through the front line, trampled everyone to death, it all went really well. That was great. Fantastic. We lost six units all told. And then we were attacked by Rus. Now, here's the thing about Rus, and uh, this normally would have worked out fine, but Jimbo, playing Rus, decided to do something special. He decided to take the Enlarge Bless. Which is not, I must emphasize, usual, but in this case kind of worked out for him because Chud Skinshifters, very, very hard-hitting, high-strength, 
berserking units, they turn into bears when they die. Um, but because they were enlarged, they started out at size 3. And size 3 means that my Shambler Thralls can't trample them. Uh, Shambler Thralls would all otherwise do 11 AP damage every time they trample somebody, unless you pass a defense skill check, which Trude Skin Shifters can't really pass. And they would have broken up the formation and scattered them around. But watch what happened. So, Roos blesses. His blesses fire shock resistance, defense skill, HP, blood surge, and larger. So a big old rainbow bless. Um, the blood surge will give them a lot more abilities once they kill somebody, which they will because I have a bunch of shitty chaff troops here. And the elemental resistances just make them resistant to pretty much every element and thus very, very hard to kill. So the chewed skin shifters come on in. So we make contact. When we make contact, my mages are out of gems at this point, so they're not doing anything. When we make contact, the Shambler Thralls, instead of trampling, begin punching, because that's all they can do. Um, and their punches are not super effective, because their damage is not super high, and Chewed Skin Shifters have quite a bit of HP. So, the punching continues. We do surround the Chewed Skin Shifters, force them into Werebear form. When well, they turn into Werebears, they're size 5, so they wouldn't be trampleable in this form anyway, but my... If they hadn't taken the Enlarge Bless, my first impact would have scattered them, uh, which would have been very, very useful. In any case, they turn into bears, um, and they just hack their way through. We kill a whole bunch of the bears, and in particular, we also kill the priest, so we kill the commander. Uh, another of the Rusian Sacred's routes, that werebear dies, um, leaving three of them in total, but because they are berserking, they don't actually run. So, despite the fact that we routed them by killing their only commander, uh, the Trude Skin Shifters win the day, and they actually kill one of my slave mages who is fatigued out and so cannot flee from casting Desiccation. So, in Pranda, we lost 35 Lobo Guards, 21 Shambler Thralls, and a slave mage to kill 5 Trude Skin Shifters and a Rusian Priest. Now, that's a lot more even than it looks numerically, because Lobo Guards are worth almost nothing. 35 Lobo Guards is literally less than 150 gold. Trude Skin Shifter is about 300 gold plus the Rusian Priest, but we lost a mage. That was the big loss, and we also lost our 21 Shambler Thralls. 21 Shambler Thralls are actually fairly expensive, so this was a significant blow, and of course it means that we didn't get the province. Other provinces went fine. We took Lake Purple with no casualties, we took the Darks with very low casualties, um, we found an Earth Gem, and we got Dominion minus three in Lake of Doom, which is super, super sad, because it means that uh, the enemy Dominion is spreading into me even more powerfully. Fortunately, this province has very low income, but I need to... I've got that temple built, so I have one more temple check, but I need more temple checks than that, especially because I also have Olm's Dominion spreading into me over here. So I'm like, mm, I'm like, mm, I need some I need some temple checks. Um, I am building a Polypole Mother here, and we'll put a Polypole Mother or two in this province and um, do that. Fort will be done next turn up here, and we'll start to upgrade it. This fort will be done in three turns. Muthulun Thulan is moving. Now, I've got a Gartha right here, and a Gartha has a pack of his seal guards. So he's been expanding with sacreds as well. Um, that being so, and also the fact that this province is surrounded by Amber Clan on both sides, makes me uncomfortable trying to keep pushing on with Mushroom Mushroom. So Mushroom Mushroom is actually going to pull back because I want to get him into position to catch these to stop the seal guard if they push in. Um, if they come into my lake, I want to be able to kill them. This will be a fort next turn, so they even if they invade if they invade here, they'll have a couple places they can go. They can go there, they can go there, they can go there. If they go here, there'll be a fort, so that'll be fine. If they go over here, eh, whatever. They'll be I'll I'll just follow them and retake the provinces behind them and not let them do anything. If they go here, that will be a problem because they'll destroy my temple. So I need to come down here, block them off there, and prevent Agartha from getting a foothold in my lake. Also, Fomoria has a foothold in this lake, but this is one of the provinces that I agreed that Therados could have. So this is Therados's problem. Uh, this province is mine. I'm suiciding my my uh, <clears throat> my mercenaries into this province. They are outnumbered and they will die. I mean, like I would be shocked if they won. But um, you know. They might, I suppose. It's possible. It's it's not completely outside the realm of possibility. It's merely very unlikely. So they'll go in. They'll look there. They'll cause a whole bunch of damage to the uh, the troops there. I am spamming out just a ton of units, a ton of cheap, shitty, mainly low resource units. I'm recruiting a slave prince and a scout, uh, and I will add those units to these units, and I will take this swarm and I will either claim Pranta, 
and, and secure my foothold on land. Or I'll take these troops and go down here, depending on whether Rus uh, puts a bunch more units in Pranda this coming turn. If he does, then okay, fine. Like, I can accept being prevented from getting on land, uh, as long as I secure my ocean borders against invasion by anyone else. So I need to stop Agartha. I need to make sure that Fomoria doesn't expand into my territory either. Um, and of course, I need to secure control of these provinces and that province. But that will take a little bit of time. Like I said, once I have this fort up, I'll start churning out more units. I'll just overwhelm the independents with garbage. And, um, I mean, literally, literally overwhelm them with garbage. Uh, I can use Lobogard to do that because these guys have some magic leadership, but more likely I'll just recruit the shitty armorless slave troops, like slave troopers and stuff, and a couple of slave princes, and just drive them that way, and should, should work fine. So, not as good as I was hoping. I'm probably not going to get a province this turn, uh, because I have to pull Mushroom Mushroom back just just to be real safe. Um, I'm going to add an Amber Clan Triton, just one, to his army here. And we've got one Amber Clan Triton up here. Uh, Nagofa can go up there, give him another Amber Clan Triton, so that'll add a couple of units to his army. If we can put in this gang, which actually has pretty decent morale. And, uh, yeah, that'll add a little bit more punch, and then the, the Mind Blasters, of course, are the main event. I may actually need to recruit more Mind Blasters than I was originally thinking, just because I do clearly have this pressure on the water from Fomoria and possibly even from Agartha, which, as mentioned, is right there. That's the only place... that, that has to be Agartha's capital. There's no other possibility. Um, and I, I cannot and will not allow Agartha into the water. Agartha cannot have any lake. He must not have any lake. Um, Holber is set to stand at the back and retreat, um, if necessary, so he'll just, he'll just run. He only has a few possible places to... It's possible. Actually, I can't... Ugh, damn it. I can't afford to do that. Because it's possible that he will randomly roll to try to retreat to one of these provinces. Because he's amphibious, so he can do that. He's not aquatic. So I just have to pull Holber back. I'll, I'll put him over there. That's where my army's gonna be. So I'll just put him over there so he can at least sight search there. But this is aggravating. I'm just being aggravated right now. It's alright, though. It's alright. It's fine. Everything's fine. There are no problems. Only challenges, variances, and opportunities to excel. So, in any case, uh, we've been pushed back a little bit, but we're still doing fine. Like I said, I'm going to suicide in there. Then we'll move some troops over to take it from one of our forts. And Mushroom Mushroom will make sure to clean up in the north there. We'll take that province, because that's owed us. We'll take these two. If Fomoria has gotten into this province, we will kick him out uh, with a stern warning never to come back and never to talk to me or my sons again. And uh, we'll... We'll carry on from there. So, thanks for watching. I'll see y'all in turn 12. All right, folks, turn 12, the end of year zero. Time to take a gander at the state of the empire. We did find two magic sites in Lake Doom, which is great. So we got an Astral Pearl and a Water Gem per turn. Uh, there was a battle in Emerald Lake where our mercenaries were defeated as anticipated. However, they did kill all the Triton Knights, which is great. Uh, the Triton Knights, I think, basically just zoomed in ahead of the enemy and pretty much did all the damage. Um, but they racked up in the process... Yeah, they, they, they killed all our guys, but in the process, they racked up enough poison damage that they died. Uh, oh, actually, it looks like there was one left. Ah, yes, there was a Triton Knight commander remaining. Okay, so four Triton Knights down. What's left is 16 Triton Troopers and two commanders. That's fine. Uh, I can live with that. We've also completed our rock walls, and we found some air gems in Endless Ocean. Uh, unfortunately, there is a plague in Lake Vastness. That's a problem. Especially because my army was there, and so part of my army is slightly diseased. But Mushroom Mushroom is bouncing his troops back up here. I think I can take Antediluvia, so I'm going to go take Antediluvia and hopefully get the uh, get the glands here as well, the tip of the Lake Peen. Um, this province, like I said, is going to have to wait a little bit. Uh, this province, we are moving down. I've looked over here, and it's like, I, I don't actually know that this has been reinforced at all. Um, it's very possible that it has not, that this is just the same surviving should skin shifters, and I could just rush in and take it real quick. But I would rather not fight over the coast right now. I would rather just, while we're still in the expansion phase, I think I can just pretty much uh, secure my domination of the waters and be happy. So we're going to move this pretty significantly sized army, 65 units. Uh, we'll, we'll even it out a little bit more, maybe. I don't want the netcasters to be alone in the front. Actually, actually, you know what? I'm actually going to swap 
we're gonna have these troopers up front and then the net casters so the nets get to come in when the enemy has already taken some harassment penalty throw their nets web them up and then they can get stabbed to death that'll be fine so Yad Tagag here will lead his 65 troops, should be able to clear Emerald Lake and hopefully also 226, and then I might be able to get on land somewhere around here. I mean, that would be kind of cool. Uh, not sure I can do it, but it would be cool. In terms of research, we are still researching up towards Conjuration 5. We will be doing that until we reach it, because it's important. We have our second, our fort active. We're upgrading it to a fortress. This rock walls will take two turns. So overall, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 provinces not great. 994 income, okay, but not great. Um, what's saving our bacon in terms of not being d a disaster, this this small expansion not being a disaster, is of course the fact that we are an underwater nation and the only people who can actually reach us are Therados. So, um, it shouldn't be too, too bad. I do need to uh, push back Fond Mamory's dominion here. So that polypole mother will help, that polypole mother will start preaching and ratchet the candles up in Lake Doom up high so that we can then start spreading into other provinces. I will also need to build another couple of temples. I would love it if I had the cash to build a temple over here uh, in Lake Vastness. That would be grand, but I don't because I don't have huge income. Also I'm recruiting a mind lord, so we're, we're starting to recruit our big boy mages. Uh, mind Lords are important. Having many of them is important, even though they are aquatic. You can, of course, get them out later in the game through various tricks, mainly the fact that my god does have air magic. And uh, so Amulets of the Fish, you can have them uh, mentally transfer their astral magic into... Oh, uh, what's the word? What are those people again? I've lost my words. Androdai. Androdai, that's it. Ah, uh, yes, these guys, so that they can become, like, Astral 4 or Astral 5. They are a little bit insane, but, uh, you know what, it, it's okay. You can you can survive it. And that lets you get Androdai with full slots who are Astral 4 or 5. Sometimes you even get the Earth Cross Path. If you get the Earth Cross Path and you can manage to get Crystal stuff, then you can get, you know, Crystal Coin. Well, I actually have Holder, so I can use him to forge Crystal Boosters, which will enable me to get them, because he has the Earth Astral Cross Path, which is amazing. So you put an astral, uh, a starshine skull cap on Holber. You have him forge a pair of uh, earth boots and a crystal coin, and then you can use those to forge more boosters. So you can end up with an Andro die who is base astral four or five because mind lords can random potentially up to astral five, um, but base astral four say wearing starshine skull cap, crystal coin. Now he's astral six. You put a small communion behind him. Now he's astral eight. Now he can cast master and slave. Which is pretty, pretty radical. Uh, also, just Android eyes who are Astral 3 or Astral 4 in general can be used to teleport around and regular enslave people or cast uh, Mind Hunt. All that kinds of, all those kinds of Astral goodies. So, definitely useful. Definitely want to start racking up Mind Lords. Now that we have a second fort that is recruiting mages, uh, that is the next priority. I also need to move a mage down here to build a lab as we upgrade this. Uh, and like I said, I'll also need a couple of temples. Because right now, I am getting a grand total of four Dominion spread chances per month. The enemy is getting a lot more than that. Their god is providing three, one guaranteed. Plus, they have a temple down here and a temple there, of course. So that's five. Um, and their profit. So they're getting six. Plus their home province, seven. I think they're getting seven checks per turn. And I'm only getting four, which is why I'm not pushing them back. And why I am suffering a little bit of slow pop kill in my uh, border provinces. It's not bad. It's not powerful pop kill so i can survive it for a little bit but it is a reason why you kind of want to remove ghost grease if you can so we'll get up there we'll take out antediluvia i'm recruiting uh three ictiads which is the most that i can recruit in this province to slightly bolster mushroom mushrooms forces in that endeavor and then we should be able to take them out pretty quick this army will travel down here slowly take emerald lake and uh 226 i have a scout over here He's sitting on Therados right now, which is fine. Therados actually is significantly on land. They've got at least three coastal provinces and probably more. Um, which is why they accepted this, uh, which is why they offered, actually, and I accepted this unequal distribution of water provinces, because I can't easily go on land and everybody knows it. So, I will use that, uh, to my advantage. Uh, we do have Jotunheim down here, as well as Vanheim. And, of course, we've got Fomoria down here somewhere. So, they may have also taken this province. If so, I'm gonna have to kick them out. And we'll see how that goes. So, that's the turn. Uh, 
I think this game is going okay so far. Could be going better, but once I manage to kind of get get my, my research revved up with my slave mages, who do provide quite a bit of research, um, I think I'll be able to hit my goals pretty quickly. I'll get... I have Thaumaturgy already. I'll get Conjuration 5. Once I get Conjuration 5, it'll kind of be a question of where I want to go next. Uh, alteration wouldn't be awful, since I do have a lot of cross paths that feed into Alteration. Higher level Thaumaturgy. Obviously, I need Mind Vessel, uh, because I need to get... Uh, get my Androdi active, and I'll need to secure some land in order to do that. Um, and higher level Thaumaturgy will also get me some of the remote sight-searching spells. I won't be able to use most of them immediately. Enslave Sea Trolls is a pretty good spell, though, so I may do that. It's, it's like Contact Sea Trolls, but it summons Slave Sea Trolls who have equipment but lower MR, if I recall correctly. And our Slaves. Uh, and Soul Slay. Soul Slay is a great spell for me to have, as is, of course, Gateway, one of the main techniques that Relay can use to move to um, to distant areas in the late game is to teleport in a Mind Lord who casts a whole bunch of water elementals, then he builds a lab, and you cast a Gateway and zoomp over a huge army of lobotomized slave troopers under the control of another Mind Lord. Because Mind Lords have a lot of magic leadership. So if you have a Mind Lord here, not an Aboleth. Aboleths have 150 magic leadership, so they can lead a lot of troops. Mind Lords have 165, so they can lead even more troops, plus they have a random path, which gives them slightly more. So, yeah, you can you can bring a pretty significant army over. For, for 10 pearls, that's a bargain. Um, and you can use it to either teleport to some other lake, if there is another lake, there isn't in this case, or you can use it to teleport up onto land if you have Amulets of the Fish on your Mind Lord, because then he can go on land. So, it should be, uh, should be very, very interesting. In any case, thanks for watching, and I will see you all in turn 13.